Hi everybody, welcome to another YouTube video. This is part two of our MB models job and I'm just in this little place. Okay, so I've not been racing a race car, but we are gonna look at some batteries. We're gonna go back over to where our Sonnen batteries are, where our solar edge inverter is. We're gonna have a quick recap over the system, and I'm gonna take you through the Sonnen part, the Eddy part, and the Zappy part of this install. Let's go. Okay, so before we get into the batteries that are behind me here, let's do a little recap on what we've got installed at this property. So part one, if you haven't already watched it, go and have a look, that covered a little bit on the batteries, but mainly on the solar edge inverter and the panels and everything that we've installed there. So we've got a 16 kilowatt solar edge inverter, three phase, and that has all of its isolators, meters, and everything. That is a completely independent system from the batteries. So if the batteries weren't here, that would work exactly the same as it does now. The batteries are watching what the solar is doing. So we've got a 16 kilowatt solar inverter. We've got 40 JA solar 405 watt panels, which is 16.2 kilowatts of peak energy. That is obviously split over the three phases. So it's not 16 kilowatt per phase. It's whatever the maths is per phase from the inverter. So that all comes down and feeds into distribution board and the batteries all monitor what that power is. So that's what we've installed. On the solar side on the battery side we've got these three beautiful cabinets just here so we've got a sonnen eco 10 on each phase so these are single phase units so we've got single phase solar edge inverter on l1 l2 and l3 that sonnen inverter in each one of these cabinets has a 4.6 kilowatt discharge so it can push onto its phase 4.6 kilowatts so we can have 4.6 4.6 and 4.6 now that isn't the storage capacity, that is the amount that we can take from those batteries and push into the property. The storage capacity of these, so how I like to term it quite often is the tank. So if you imagine it as a water tank, that water tank can hold 11 kilowatt hours of storage. So there's 11 kilowatt hours of usable capacity in each one of these batteries. And like I said, the, to take us back to that analogy, the, the tap on that tank is the inverter. So we can turn that tap on up to 4.6 kilowatts per phase. So we've got 11 kilowatt hour tank and a 4.6 kilowatt tap. So stay with me, it's not gonna be a plumbing thing. That's the only plumbing that's gonna feature in this video. Um, so that's what we've got. These together are all paired up over the internet. So this creates one 33 kilowatt hour system. So we've got 11, 11, 11, 33 kilowatt hours of total capacity, but the units themselves are all single phase. So that's what we've got here. We're also gonna go through the Eddy and the Zappy, but the next part of this video is gonna be on the actual Sonnen batteries themselves. Let's take a look. Okay, let's take a look inside this Sonnen battery 10. So this is what these cabinets hide, basically. We've got down here, we've got these two black batteries. That's 5.5 kilowatt hours of usable capacity each, totaling that 11 kilowatt hours. We've then got the inverter and the, what they call the power unit. So that is this, this top part here. It looks quite Dalek-esque. So we've got our handles here for taking this off. So if this ever went faulty, this basically unbolts and you take it off and then you can put another one straight back in. So it's nice and easy to change. All we've got to these power units is there is a main power supply, which is fed from an AC isolator locally, which is just down the side. And we've then got a six mil cable coming in and an internet cable going back out. So if this was the master battery, we would have exactly the same, but we'd also have a Modbus meter cable. So just another Cat6 cable, Cat5 cable, whichever one, whatever you want to use, going back out to the meter, which is in the top box of this DB, which I'll show you in a minute. That master battery is connected online like the other two slaves are, and we just link all of those together to create one system. So wiring wise, it's fairly straightforward. We've just got a main supply and an internet connection, a hardwired internet connection. 
The Sonnens have to have a hardwired internet connection to each one, just security of the connection, but uh, also just the amount of information that it transmits. So that's all that we have wired in there. We've then got our battery cables and our uh, battery communications cables, which come and plug into this power unit. And that is obviously to get the power from the batteries or to the batteries if they need to charge or discharge. And also the BMS uh, communications so that it can work out what the state of charge is, if there are any problems, which battery module might be faulty. And yeah, just give all the information to the system so that we can see it on the beautiful Sonnen app. So that is a little overview of that. We've then got the LED here, which gives us the nice bluey white light that you can see through the cabinets. Um, so blue, like it is now, means everything's okay. So thankfully that is what we can see today. Uh, if that was yellow, it means we've lost internet connection. If it's green, it means we've lost grid. And if it's red, it means we've got a battery problem. So that is the color coding for those. But other than that, that is all there is to see within the Sonnen Battery 10. And uh, yeah, it's a nice straightforward unit to, uh, to install and to, uh, to deal with. So if you've seen part one, you'll recognize this next bit. So we're gonna repeat the costings, what we've installed, how long it's taken, and it'll be exactly the same as we've done in part one. So if this is the first part you've seen, then check out part one for the solar side of things, but these costings and explanations are exactly the same. So as we've done with a lot of other videos, we've put what we've installed, the amount it's cost the customer, and the amount of time that it's taken us to do this full project start to finish. So let's crack on with that. We've got, this is what we've installed. This is the amount that it's cost the customer. And this is the time that it's taken for us to complete the full installation. Okay, so let's have a look at the Sonnen uh, battery dashboard uh, and the app that we use as an installer is very similar to what you get as a customer. So on here, this is the general landing page. So we've got all the details of the battery, the customer. We can access basically from here, loads of different windows, but we're gonna go through that in a little minute. But we can see the battery number here. So number of capacity. So we've got 33 kilowatt hours. We're on battery mode time of use, which we'll go through in a minute. State of charge is at 100%, so we're fully charged now. And so it's state is standby. It's waiting for something to do. We can't charge anymore but there's not uh, any demand in the property that is above what the solar can handle. So it's sat there ready for later on in the evening when the sun goes down or the capacity goes up, uh, the consumption goes up. So if we go to battery details, we can see there we've got, it tells us again that we're on a 100% state of charge. So that is the overall capacity of everything. So that is the full 33 kilowatt hours. So we don't have to go into another part to see what battery number two or number three is doing. That is everything on this system. So that's the total system. So if we go to the change operating mode, so currently we're on time of use. So time of use mode is if you've got, like this place has, like MB models have, if you've got a cheap overnight tariff and you've got a window that would allow you to charge up or to use energy but at a cheaper rate, we can set that into the batteries so that these can charge up, buying power in, because it's at night, but this property saves about eight pence between its peak and its off-peak rate. So you can imagine in the winter time especially, or the duller times of year, where we're not, we haven't got the huge amounts of solar production that we do have or that we're going to have this year as we move into the summer months, then the time of use side of things is actually really valuable because we can, we can save effectively eight pence per kilowatt kilowatt hour that we use during the day by using energy that we purchased on a night when it was eight pence cheaper. So that is what's set into here at the minute. If we wanted the battery just to work as a self-consumption battery, so basically it didn't charge up unless there was surplus solar power, then we would set that self-consumption mode. The way that would work is if the solar is producing 10 kilowatts, the business and the home needs five, then the system would charge up with five. As soon as there was a demand in the property, so say the solar producing five, but the home needed 10, then the system would discharge that five. And it's not looking to charge up overnight. It's just looking to charge from the solar. Battery module extension mode is just if we want to add more batteries to this, we'd put it into that mode. It would get the batteries to a certain point where the new battery would integrate them and they would have a similar state of charge. So that's all fine we can change the tariff window. So if the tariff changes, we can go to this part here that says edit tariff windows. It's on the right there in the, in the sort of blacky blue button and we can alter the tariff windows from the app. 
we go to PV system and meters, so again, some of this might not be on the final customer's app, but we can see we've got a 16 kilowatt solar PV inverter. It's just got 100% feeding limit, so we don't need to try and restrict any of that. And then we've got the actual meter. So this gives us loads of information with regards to voltages, with ampage, and loads of other good stuff, but probably won't be too interesting for you unless you're an electrician watching this. So the main one is this energy analysis. So this here is tracking how the system has done. This part here is best on a desktop, on a big screen with a mouse and everything because you can, you can navigate this a lot easier. But we can see over here, we've got our full system and we've got a bit of information here. So we've got uh, firstly a green line that is moving up. That is the battery percentage. So that is relating to the percentage symbols on the right hand side. So you can see there, it got up to about that time there, it got towards 100% and that was, uh, that was at 9.41 this morning. If we scroll back out, it then started to dip around here and it got down to about 84% state of charge and that was at about 11 o'clock and then it started to charge back up again as we move through the, uh, the day. So it's now at 100%. And uh, that's just because the sun's come out and there's more generation being produced than can be used in the property. So you can see in this little window here, as the line moves across, there was a spike in consumption and the solar hadn't quite caught up. For that particular point, the bar at the top there says there was 8.5 kilowatts of solar production, 19 kilowatts of consumption. That meant that all of the 8.5 kilowatts of solar production was being used and the battery started to discharge. So that's moving down and then it sort of levels out during the middle of the day and then starts to charge back up again towards the middle of the day, it starts to charge back up and now we're at 100%. We've got set currently a time of use charge on this and we were chatting to the customer this morning and we're thinking of dropping that from 100% down to say 50, 60% just because we've got a lot of solar generation that we're starting to get now, but we still want a little bit for those dull days that we may for this little dip in the middle here so that we can try and uh, give the give the system enough capacity to charge, but enough early capacity to get us through the morning to allow the sun to start generating and start charging that battery again, just from sunlight. So even though the morning tariff, the early off peak tariff is, um, is cheaper, it's still a cost to the business. If it buys power at, during the peak time or the off peak time, that's still money that's having to go out. So we're trying to find that little midpoint where we're buying enough to make a difference for the morning period, but then giving the battery enough capacity to charge just from solar, because at the end of the day, that is where the real savings uh, happen. You can see here as well, that if I scroll down, we've then got forecasted um, generation. So if we move here, you can see here that the production forecast is five kilowatts at four o'clock this afternoon, and the consumption is about six kilowatts. So the battery will just start to discharge at this point. And as we move along, the, the solar drops off at, it reckons, at about seven o'clock tonight, but the consumption will be at about 6.4 kilowatts. So it uses the past information it had on how this property has been using power to, uh, to assess that. It may be wildly out, one of the flats upstairs is a party or something like that, or they're on holiday, it might be completely uh, a lot lower than that, but that's what it's forecasted at the minute. So that gives the customer a bit of an idea as to, as to what the property is probably gonna use. So if we scroll back up, we can then change the dates that we look at so we can move back along different days. So you can see here, we've got, we're, we've got a similar figure. We've got starts charging up early hours, drops to uh, about 80% and then starts charging back up again. So it's ready for this time of use adjustment really so that we can start to, uh, start to really take advantage of the solar. So you can see again, so the early ones over here, you can start to see that we're, we're actually discharging a lot quicker um, we're reaching the top and it's that discharge a lot quicker here, but the solar is also a lot less because we're a lot earlier on in the year uh, or we are earlier on in the year now. So yeah, it's, it's looking good. Um, so if we go back to the overview, that is about everything you need to see on it, but it gives you a general idea as to how much you're producing, how much you're importing, how much you're exporting, so how self-reliant you are. The customer's version of this also has uh, some more unique information as to the percentage of 
self-sufficiency you are so that you can see if you're you know 80% self-sufficient 20% whatever it gives you all, all that information so that you can start to make an assessment as to whether or not to charge more in the mornings or reduce that but the partner one just doesn't include that because uh, we don't necessarily need to know that we can see all of that from this live data that we can see on this graph here but yeah that is the Sonnen app in a nutshell so now we've looked at this part let's have a quick look at the other bit of Sonnen kit we've got in here so in this top box we've got our Sonnen meter so the Sonnen meter monitors what the solar is doing and what the main supply is doing so the main supply is important because that will tell us if the system is importing or exporting and the solar is important because that will tell us how much the solar is producing and put that figure on the app we've then got our circuits in here for the sonnens and we've got our sonnen meter circuit and we've got some circuit protection in here all that comes from the main panel board so if sonnens find that they need to discharge to support the flat upstairs or the shop then the power will flow from the batteries through our renewables distribution board, through the supply cable, into the panel board, through the MCCBs, and into the distribution boards for the properties. Um, and it'll help support this full building to uh, try and keep that meter from moving up and uh, keep it at that zero figure if we can. So yeah, now we've covered the Sonnens, what we're gonna do, we're gonna shoot out to see the Zappy, and then we're gonna shoot up to see the Eddy, and that'll be us up, up and running and done. So we're out here at the Zappi now. So this is a 22 kilowatt, so that's three phase, Zappi tethered unit. So we've got the Porsche charging up at the minute. And I'm not gonna go through every single mode on the Zappi because we've got loads of other videos on that and I don't wanna bore you all with it. But the Zappi will basically use some the solar power if there's a lot of surplus solar power and charge the car. It can also just act as a normal charger and just charge that car up as quickly as possible up to 22 kilowatts if the car can take it and it's basically there as another energy dump to put the power into another big battery which is obviously in the car so that we're not wasting much of that power if we can help it but also it's just there to functionally charge an electric car as quickly as possible so that will link to the my energy app and that will also link to the eddy so that those two devices can talk to each other and you can set a priority as to what device receives the energy first but uh, yeah it's a nice little charger and we can also fit more on this bay as more of the staff get electric vehicles right so we're up next to the main hot water tank so this hot water tank serves all of the flats that we're up next to now as well as the um the shop downstairs so it's electrically heated um, by the eddy so we've got immersion circuit that comes in there's also a secondary immersion circuit that we haven't taken through the eddy just because that's more of a backup um, backup one so we've got one circuit coming through uh, and the eddy will look for surplus power and the good thing about the eddy is that it'll operate at really low wattage so if we've just got like 10 15 watts that the battery and the the zappy won't really be that interested in the eddy can take that and start to heat it not that it would do a huge amount in a tank that can take three kilowatts but it'll do something at least it's been used so the eddy will sit there and heat this tank up through the immersion heater and use up more of that power can imagine as the solar power grows in the summertime we want to be sending power to the car to the batteries to the property and to things like the eddy and the immersion heater so that is part two all wrapped up we've covered the solar edge system briefly we've had a look at the sonnen battery system with the app we've revealed how much it's all cost we've had a look at the eddy and we've had a look at the zappy so if you've got any questions about this system that you've seen then please leave them in the comments and i'll try and get back to as many as i can if you aren't already a subscriber and you haven't hit the little notification bell then please do so it really helps us to grow and allows us to put more and more time into the videos and also if you've got any recommendations for videos as well then let us know but thanks so much for joining us on this one and we'll see you on the next one